Over the years, there have been many, many LEGO games, and each one has been amazing, every single one of them. But today, we will be ranking all LEGO games from worst to best. Anyway, let's cue the intro music. So, hello, hello, hello there, guys. I'm Rugged Eagle, and I do lots of LEGO content on my channel. So, if you do like what you see, feel free to subscribe. It is up to you. And make sure you do go drop a like if you do go to enjoy this video. Anyway, let's get into the rules and regulations before we start the ranking. So when ranking these LEGO games, I will be taking in these factors, the level design, the hub worlds, the fun factor, and the replayability. I'm going to not let, try and let nostalgia take over me with rose-tinted glasses, but I also will be considering reviews and what other people think of that general LEGO game. Also, just to note before we start, I will not be including LEGO Star Wars the video game and LEGO Star Wars 2 the original trilogy, because pretty much the complete saga is both of them games in one. Anyway, let's jump into the rank. Coming in at the bottom of the list, the worst LEGO game at number 25 is LEGO Indiana Jones 2. Now, I have based this mainly upon the reviews, and I actually played this literally a few weeks ago with my mate with online multiplayer, and I actually had a blast. Now, I do know where the falls are. Compared to the first LEGO Indiana Jones game, it is kind of just an add-on expansion with just a few levels to do with the Crystal Skull. However, though, there were a few aspects I really enjoyed about this game, especially the online multiplayer with my mate, I really enjoyed how they did how you choose the hub worlds to select with the actual LEGO sets, I thought that was a pretty cool idea and unique, and it also had an online leaderboard, which was very unique for a LEGO game. Now also remember, this is my list, and also I'm taking in reviews from other people, this will not be the same as your list, so please let me know what your favourite LEGO game is, this could be your favourite, but that is your list. Anyway, I also thought the end boss battles weren't nothing special, they kind of just made every single last boss battle like a giant boss fight i don't really understand why they did that and they kind of rushed a few levels especially in the raiders of the lost ark they cut out the entire boulder scene segment from that movie Coming in at number 24 is LEGO Movie 2, the video game, releasing in 2019. Now, is LEGO Movie 2 a bad LEGO game? Absolutely not. I had a blast playing through this again, and it was a really fun LEGO game experience. Now, with this being the most recent LEGO game before the Skywalker Saga, the graphics are amazing, and I'm a massive fan on how they did the character grid and the character customizer. I thought that was a wicked way they did it, and that is one of the best character grids and customizer I have seen in a the Lego game. However, there are some flaws. I wasn't a massive fan of some of the levels because I wasn't a massive fan of the actual LEGO Movie 2, and the rest of the LEGO games on the list are far superior. However, this is still a great LEGO game, so if you have not played it, definitely pick it up for cheap if you can. Coming in at number 23 is LEGO Ninjago Movie, the video game. Now, I just want to say straight off the bat, the combat in the LEGO Ninjago game is absolutely fantastic. I had so much good fun with it, and it's actually quite an in-depth combat for a LEGO game. You can do loads of evasive rolls and mid-air attacks, the flying butterfly kick, or whatever they call it. Overall, it's great combat. One of the best I have seen in a LEGO game. And also to mention, there is a skill tree, which I thought was super funny, and they are actually bringing this into the Skywalker Saga, which is cool to see. And also, the hub world looks fantastic. With it all being built out of Lego, it actually looks visually stunning and very accurate to the movie. So why have I ranked it so low on the list? Well, truth be honest, I haven't played it as much as I wanted to, and also, I think Ninjago deserves an even bigger game. With it being a massive franchise in terms of Lego, instead of just basing it off the movie and stretching out some of the levels like they did in the game, I think Ninjago deserves a massive LEGO game. I'm not a massive fan of the Ninjago franchise, but I think fans of Ninjago deserve a full-on LEGO Ninjago game. Coming in at number 22 is LEGO Movie, the video game. Now, funnily enough, I actually have quite a lot of nostalgia for the LEGO Movie game, but I didn't want to look at it with rose-tinted glasses. There are a few flaws to it, obviously being based on the movie. The cutscenes are just straight up out of the movie. However, 
I think the level design in this Lego game is absolutely fantastic, especially with the voice actors and the characters speaking to each other. It's a pretty funny game to play through because there's some funny lines of dialogue, especially from Vitruvius. However, knowing the story and already what's happened after watching the actual Lego movie, you kind of expect what is coming next a level after level, so that does kind of ruin it. Now, another thing that did ruin it for me was the hub worlds. I didn't think the hub worlds were that amazing. The characters were obviously cool because you got many different characters from all sorts of franchises like Green Lantern and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in there so it does rank a little bit higher due to that. But I did play this a lot as a kid so I do have nostalgia for it so you have not played Lego Movie the game, play it. Coming in at number 21 is Lego Worlds. Now, LEGO Worlds is a really weird one to rank. You either love it or hate it. Personally, me, I'm quite a creative person and I love designing stuff in games, so I absolutely love LEGO World. I loved exploring and building stuff, so it's right up my alley. So if it was a personal list for me, it would be a lot higher. However, if you're not into that, you probably would rank this at the bottom. It's just personal preference, so I put it here because it's kind of a mixed bag. However, on console, LEGO Worlds can be quite laggy. It does have online multiplayer but it doesn't run the smoothest. The that. Also releasing in 2016 is Lego The Avengers, coming in at number 19. Now, when I was growing up, I actually played Lego Avengers quite a lot, and I have to say, I did really enjoy the game. However, looking at reviews and what other people have to say on it, they definitely did not prefer this. I think because Marvel Super Heroes 1 is such a great Lego game, that's why people rank it a little bit lower. However, the game didn't have Spider-Man in, that upset quite a lot of people. They did add him later on as DLC for free for everyone to claim. Now I found some of the levels in LEGO Avengers to be super fun and I found some of the levels to be a little bit boring. Not as such drawn out, just some of them lacked a little diversity. However, I did really like how you can team up and do the superhero combos. I thought that was a cool feature so it is here at number 19. Dropping in at number 18 is LEGO Harry Potter years 5 to 7. Now this again is quite a strange one to rank because personally if you like Harry Potter, if you prefer the movies 5 to 7, I think you're going to prefer this game more. If you like 1 to 4 movies in general, you're going to prefer years 1 to 4, however, there are some flaws to 5 to 7. Throughout the game, at the very beginning, it takes all your spells off you, which you do learn in years 4, so I don't understand that. However, all the game relies on, mostly in the puzzles, is the Aquamenti spell, which does get quite a bit frustrating after some time. However, I definitely love the Defindo spell. I thought that was a little cool mini game, so that kind of equals it out. Now, whilst playing through it, I have to say the graphics are amazing, especially in the Harry Potter collection, with it releasing in 2011. I do like the dueling scenarios that they do, however they can be very easy, obviously it's based upon kids and not meant to be difficult, however they are a little bit too easy. But I do have to say the hub world is fantastic, it literally is Hogwarts. And especially with the Lego Harry Potter games, I do think the replayability is pretty strong, however some of the level designs in the Half-Blood Prince segment is a little bit tedious and not the greatest, however, the levels in episode 5 and 7 are fantastic overall and really good level design. Coming in at number 17 is LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. Now LEGO Batman 3 is strangely good, however it does have its minor flaws, but overall I have to say the character roster in LEGO Batman 3 is amazing. And also, I want to point out all the outfits for certain characters like Batman, Robin and Joker. They are all fun and unique and it is quite good how you solve the puzzles using the different outfits. I do like that about the LEGO Batman games. Also, again, LEGO Batman 3 has its own unique story with the main villain being Brainiac and I do have to say it's quite a good story and fun to play through. However, I think the biggest flaw for me in LEGO Batman 3 is the hub worlds. Now, I am not saying the hub worlds in LEGO Batman 3 are terrible. I actually quite liked how they changed up the idea, but it didn't actually work for me. However, you might actually like how they designed the hub worlds in LEGO Batman 3 
Personally, it's not for me. I prefer just how they had Gotham in Lego Batman 2. That's just personal preference. But I do think the hub worlds were a little bit lacklustre. Moving on to number 16 on the list is -na 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 -na, The Incredibles. Now, Lego Incredibles does get slated quite a lot for being quite an easy Lego game. Now, when I was playing through it, I didn't think about that. Some of the levels, yes, were easy, but I had an absolute blast frame through them. Again, I love The Incredibles. Overall, it's a quite a funny Lego game. The voice lines are amazing, and it's just cool to see The Incredibles in a Lego game. Also, whilst we are on the topic of the hub worlds, they kind of went down a different alley in the hub worlds. Basically, they're like gang areas where you have to take them out and claim them over, basically by defeating like a mini boss in the hub world. And I really liked how they did that. And it just made the replayability and playability of the game overall in general a lot more fun. And with this being one of the most recent LEGO games releasing in 2018, the combat is fantastic. All the characters are unique, and I love how you can get some of the Pixar characters like Woody from Toy Story. I just love how they did that. So overall, I had a blast with LEGO Incredibles, so that's why I'm ranking it here on the list. At number 15 is Lego The Hobbit. Now, Lego The Hobbit is a very unique Lego game because obviously it's set in the past and you're using swords and it's overall pretty fun. The combat is very unique with the fighting and it does go into like these cinematic action scenes when you're fighting, which are very fun to watch. Now, I would say the level design in the Lego Hobbit is okay. I especially liked how they did them character combo things to solve puzzles with the dwarves. I thought they were pretty funny and overall the story is great it's the hobbit i do prefer lord of the rings we'll get to the ranking of that later but the voice lines and following the story is overall good and it does have some okay gags in there and not to forget they brung in a new feature like a crafting feature into the hobbit game i thought this was a pretty cool feature and it did mix in pretty well with the hobbit theme in general at number 14 is lego city undercover that released in 2013 now, LEGO Batman 2 mainly introduced the hub world exploration into LEGO games, and a year after came City Undercover, which originally dropped on the Wii U and later came out on consoles. However, they massively improved the hub world from LEGO Batman 2. City Undercover is absolutely fantastic to explore. The hub world is great, and it's basically LEGO GTA. Now, LEGO City Undercover is very unique. It's not based on a massive IP as such, more the LEGO City franchise franchise in actual lego sets and it's overall great it has its own unique story it's got some fun levels in there with some okay ones especially the level where you go to the prison on albatross island i think they call it which is literally alcatraz that is a great level and the voice acting and the music in the game is great coming in at the unlucky number 13 is lego marvel superheroes 2 now, LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 is always in the shadow of LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1, with number 1 being an absolute brilliant LEGO game, number 2 had to live up to them expectations, and I don't think it reached them expectations, however, it is a great LEGO game. Now, again, it had its own unique story, which was overall fun to play through, and some of the characters are great how they develop them. I especially love Star-Lord, how you could listen to his music. I liked how they did Carnum and stuff like that. I believe that's what it's called. And some of the big fig characters were really fun, and they added some other, like, Assassin Monkey. Is it Hit Monkey or something? They added quite a lot of interesting Marvel characters into the roster. Now, the hub world in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 does get a mixed bag of opinions. Some people love it and some people absolutely hate it. Me, I actually didn't mind it. I thought it was really cool I could visit different Marvel sceneries in one big city. I thought that was cool. I especially liked the noir scene because it went black and white when you went in there. And overall, I liked it, but some people did not like it at all. Coming in at number 12 is LEGO Jurassic World. Now, Jurassic World was a very unique IP and franchise to do as a LEGO game, and it definitely paid off. Now, LEGO Jurassic World is great. It has good level design. It also has a good roster of characters, mainly due to the dinosaurs. They were super fun, 
and you could customise your own dinosaur. Now, I absolutely love the aesthetic of LEGO Jurassic World. The whole world was very vibrant. The soundtrack playing in the background when you're exploring it just makes it a great experience. Now, from here on out, it does get very difficult to spot flaws with the next lot of LEGO games because these LEGO games are fantastic. Now, that's not to say every LEGO game on this list is amazing. And this list were very hard for me to put together because I love every LEGO game. Also, do remember your list will be a lot more different to mine and I am ranking this in my personal opinion whilst also mixing in other people's reviews to try and get a balanced ranking. Dropping in at number 11 is LEGO Batman 2. Now, I had to take my rose-tinted glasses off for this because I love LEGO Batman 2 as a kid. It's literally probably the LEGO game I played the most as a kid. I loved LEGO Batman 2. However, why is it at number 11? Well, basically, the list got very, very difficult for me from the next lot because it literally gets into the top 10. However, LEGO Batman 2 were the first LEGO game to introduce voice lines, and they did it pretty well, and they kept in some great gags, and overall, it didn't ruin it. Some people do prefer mumbles to voice lines, and it was quite a big change. Now, LEGO Batman 2, looking back, actually shaped LEGO games quite a lot. It introduced the first massive open world hub world in a LEGO game, and overall, they nailed it. I especially liked how you unlock certain characters. You actually had to find them in the hub world and defeat them like a mini boss battle, and you simply purchase them. I love that idea. And that is why LEGO Batman 2 lands just outside the top 10 at number 11. Scraping its way into the top 10 is LEGO DC Super Villains. Now, with this being one of the most recent installments in the LEGO franchise, they went pretty big with this game, and not only that, the graphics are fantastic, with the game releasing in 2018. Now, I did say I did not want nostalgia to ruin the ranking, and some of you are probably thinking, why have I put this above LEGO Batman 2? Well, in retrospective, LEGO DC Super Villains is a lot better. The level design is overall fantastic. LEGO Batman 2 has some great levels, whereas it also has some pretty boring levels, such as the Ace Chemical level. Now, the main highlight for me in LEGO DC Super Villains is the character customizer. What an absolute great job they did on this. It's really cool how you can unlock your powers throughout playing the campaign, and it's cool at the end of the game how it makes you decide if you want to become a full-time villain or a full-time superhero. And finally, DC Super Villains has a fantastic hub world and map. It's cool how you can go to Gotham and Metropolis and the scenery changes. This is what I thought Marvel 2 should have done, but they didn't quite nail it. However, in DC Super Villains, they nailed the hub world and the map. Fantastic job. Also, you can get the police. Dropping in at number 9 is LEGO Dimensions. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on Dimensions. Overall, it's a great LEGO game. You have so many franchises basically shoved into one LEGO game. It's great. However, there is one massive downfall to Dimensions, the cost. It is a very, very expensive game. But if you do have the shekels, it will be a fantastic experience. Fighting its way into number 8 is LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, what else is there to say? LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean is one of the best LEGO games to play through. Replaying it literally the other day, I had so much fun. It was even better replaying it. The soundtrack in the background. Overall, the level design is fantastic. There's a couple of levels that are a little bit dim, but you expect that in a lot of LEGO games. But the ones where you're actually fighting bosses and doing the Pirates of the Caribbean stuff, it is great. Now, one of the things I especially liked about the Pirates of the Caribbean in LEGO game was the diversity with the puzzles. I like the one where you have to use Jack Sparrow's compass to solve quite a lot of stuff, digging up stuff. It's just great for puzzles and diversity in levels. And for 2011, this was just before TT Games started developing massive open world hub worlds in LEGO games. It actually had quite a decent hub world to explore, with this game releasing in 2011. Bearing in mind, in 2011, they actually pumped out three LEGO games. They pumped out Clone Wars, they pumped out Harry Potter and Pirates of the Caribbean all in the same year. And looking at it in 2021, the game still holds up. It's actually got surprisingly good graphics for the time. The gameplay mechanics are fantastic. Overall, great LEGO game. 
definitely play it if you have not played it. Making its way into number 7 on the list is LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventures. Now where to begin with this LEGO game? What can I say? It's just overall a great adventure playing this game. I know that was cheesy but it's a great LEGO game. The puzzles I think are fantastic because at the end of the day it's Indiana Jones. It is mainly based on puzzles so you expect to have some good puzzles in the game. Now something I loved about the LEGO Indiana Jones games was the combat, not just for the mechanics, but the sound design is amazing. When you're punching all the henchmen and the goons, the sound design just makes it perfect. And playing through each movie is great. They nailed Raiders of the Lost Ark, they also nailed Temple of Doom, and they nailed The Last Crusade. What else can you ask for? And again, for 2008, the hub world was pretty decent. It had quite a lot of stuff going on, and it was just cool to explore. Overall, I think it is an improvement from the complete Saga's hub world, so I give them points for that. Making its way just outside the top 5 is LEGO Harry Potter Years 1-4 to four at number 6. Now funnily enough I do have a lot of nostalgia for LEGO Harry Potter's Years 1-4. to four. I played this so much as a kid and oh it's just a great LEGO game, come on, it's fantastic. Even if you're not a fan of Harry Potter, you'll still have a blast playing through it. I love the levels, especially in the Philosopher's Stone and the Chamber of Secrets and Prisoner Azkaban. The Goblet of Fire I thought could have been a little bit better but overall the levels are great. Now not to forget, outside of the actual main campaign levels you actually had to do lessons in Hogwarts to learn your spells. This is same for years 5 to 7, but I love the lessons in years 1 to 4, especially Gildroy Lockhart's lessons, <laughs> they were great. And again, I think this LEGO game changed the formula for LEGO games in general. It was pretty much one of the biggest hub worlds for the time. 2010, I thought they nailed Hogwarts, exploring it around, learning the spells. I thought it was really cool how they did the spells, and they did this in 5 to 7. And we definitely need to see a remake of a LEGO Harry Potter game. It'd be wicked. And TT Games put so much detail into their LEGO games. If you're actually playing, say, Chamber of Secrets, when you are exploring Hogwarts, you can see Gildroy Lockhart being chased by girls and it adapts to each movie you're playing. Making its way into the top 5 is LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. Now this was a very very unique LEGO Star Wars game and I have to say I think they nailed it. With it being based upon the first two seasons mainly of the Clone Wars and the movie. Now overall in LEGO Star Wars Clone Wars 3 the level design is great and I especially did like the ground battles however some of the ground battles were very very tedious whereas some of them were so much fun so it's kind of a mixed bag but I think they were a really cool idea and I hope they put them in the Skywalker saga. Now looking at the combat mechanics in LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars 3 that released in 2011, it is still pretty solid to this day. The force lightning and force choke is so much fun to use and overall how the mechanics work, it's fluid and still holds up in 2021. Also in Clone Wars 3 they added the split screen mechanic, I don't know how to describe it but you can switch between two scenarios by holding a certain button down. I thought this was overall an okay idea and they did actually use this in LEGO Jurassic World so they have brung it back. And also the replayability is great especially after finishing the Clone Wars especially season 7. It's really cool to play LEGO Star Wars The Clone Wars 3. It's just cool to see where they came from and the hub world is overall great for 2011. You get to explore a Venator and a Separatist Dreadnought. Swinging in at number 4 on the list is LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. Now this is one of the most hyped up LEGO games. After having so many LEGO Batman games, well two LEGO Batman games, it was so cool to see a Marvel franchise in a LEGO game. Playing as Spider-Man, Iron Man, the Hulk, it was fantastic. And I think this was the first time they proper did big figs in a LEGO game. Now it also had its own unique story like the LEGO DC games which was nice to see so you didn't actually know what to expect and it wasn't based off any Marvel movies as such and it was just fun to play having the Fantastic Four meet the X-Men and the Avengers, a great LEGO game. And on top of that the replayability in this LEGO game is very very strong, having to collect all the Deadpool bricks I think they were and all the gold bricks and stuff to unlock more characters and exclusive levels, the replayability is very very strong. Even replaying it in 2021, I'm having a blast with the game. Dropping in at number 3, in the top 3 is LEGO Lord of the Rings. 
Now this was the second LEGO game to have voice lines and what a great pick they chose. They captured the Lord of the Rings movies in a LEGO game. Now if you're not a massive fan of Lord of the Rings, I still recommend playing this because I actually played this as a young kid and I never watched Lord of the Rings but I enjoyed it so much because it's such a unique Lego game. It's so different. Now after being a massive fan of Lord of the Rings and watching the movies, coming back to play this Lego game to give my opinion on it, it's great. They have captured it. Exploring Middle Earth is just phenomenal and the level design is amazing. Placing number two on the list is Lego Batman 1, the video game. Again, I didn't want nostalgia to affect this list, and I am going off reviews too, also remember that. Lego Batman 1 is just great. It's, well, it's phenomenal. Except from the vehicle levels, obviously, it's same with Complete Saga. The old vehicle levels can get a little bit annoying, especially when you have to drag the bombs. It's a pain. Now, this was the first ever Lego game to have its own unique story. It was quite heavily inspired by Tim Burton's Batman films, which I love even more especially with the soundtrack in the background, it just makes it even better and better. Lego Batman 1 has to have some of the best level designs in a Lego game, except from the vehicle missions, but I put them aside because obviously it's 2008, the vehicle missions aren't going to be amazing. And to finish off with, even though there's not that many characters in LEGO Batman 1, all of the characters are very fun to use. And like I said, this was the first time we saw DC in a LEGO game, which made it even better back in the day. And I think the main strongest point of LEGO Batman 1 is the outfits and the puzzles. How they use the different bat suits and robin suits to solve puzzles, I think was very unique and very well done. And also, the combat in LEGO Batman 1. It's same as LEGO Indiana Jones 1, they both released in the same year. The combat and the sound design for fighting, it just makes it perfect. And landing in at number one is Lego 